Now, hi, my name is Joe Ryu, and I'm an author and illustrator. I love to work on children's books, most of all, and especially graphic novels. I'm beaming in from uh, my home in uh, Carp, Ontario, which is just on the outskirts of Ottawa, which is my hometown. I never moved very far from my hometown. And after college, I came back here and settled in the, uh, in the suburbs uh, with all the nature and the animals, which is where I do my, my best thinking and my best drawing. So I'll take it over to Tobin. And Tobin, I knew your uh, your books before I got on this project. Uh, I had read Octavia Nothing. And I'm wondering okay. um, what's different about writing graphic novels uh, uh, in comparison to novels? Well, first, let me just introduce myself. I am M.T. Anderson. Um, I am a writer of books for children and for teens and for adults. Um, and uh, I am coming to you from rural Vermont in a, uh, a Creek Hill haunted house I live in. So this project is, um, you know, The Daughters of East, which is uh, with a script by me, and then Joe did the illustrations. Um, and um, it is a, uh, a graphic novel for older teens and adults, that kind of thing. And the thing that I really loved about it was in fact the idea that, you know, it, for me, what I do when I'm writing a graphic novel, and this is the only the second one that I've done, but I write something that looks like a Hollywood script, you know, that has sort of lines of dialogue and, and just some pretty basic descriptions of what's going on. And so to me, the magic of working on this, especially with someone as talented as Joe, is that I get to sort of see what their imagination makes out of my words. They take it and make it into their own thing then. So to me, that was really kind of an, an incredible part of working on this, which is, you know, um, this is based on a Breton folk tale. So a tale, a kind of old Celtic tale from, um, from the coast of France. And so taking this material that's very old, turning it into one thing, handing it over to you, and then seeing what you uh, made of it. So perhaps sh um, I should just say a word about the plot of the book before we move on, because obviously I want to ask you what it was like to then receive this script, kind of thump on your desk, and uh, you have to make something out of it. So um, <laughs> but let me just explain to the viewers just a little bit about the plot. So the idea is that it is a, um, a story about a sunken city, a mythical city that supposedly existed off the coast of Brittany in France in you know, ancient times, the city of East, spelled Y-S. And, um, and there actually is a place. This is the way that I discovered the story. I was in France working on another project, and I came to this place called the Bay de Trépassé, the Bay of the Dead. And I was like, that is uh, quite a uh, formidable name. Why would you call this place this beautiful little bay, the Bay of the Dead? And the story was that one of the things they told me was that there had been a city there and that it had sunken beneath the waves because of the sins of the king's daughter. Now, I found that interesting because you always hear these, uh, these tales of things like, you know, that the, the king's daughter made one mistake and <laughs> destroyed the whole civilization. And you start to wonder, is there another part of the story that's not being told? what would the story look like from the king's daughter's point of view? So this really is taking a bunch of the different versions of that legend, weaving them together, and then saying, what would this story look like if we actually can see what this, this young woman uh, thought of what was going on? And how is it that she supposedly caused the collapse of the city? Especially because one of the stories they still tell in that region is that um, on dark, stormy nights, the fishermen who are out at sea off of that Bay de Trépassé, they can actually supposedly hear the, um, the ringing of the, um, of the bells of this lost city beneath the waves rocked by the tide, that they can hear the singing of this lonely sorceress trapped forever in her city. And that was such a beautiful, sad image of isolation but I wanted to get into this character. And one of the things that I loved about working with Joe is that she instantaneously 
uh, intuited that the like the inner life of that that young woman was central to the project. You know what I mean? Like this is a story about her. So Joe, why don't you talk about how you got this script and then turn it into something that looks so beautiful? Oh, thank you, Tobin. Um, I think it's it's really interesting that you say that you write it like a movie script because when I first started reading it, especially that, that first page, uh, it, it played in my mind like a movie. And uh, mm -hmm. so what happened, I was actually in a workshop uh, at a school and this was during break time. And I, I heard a ping on my phone and I just kind of glanced at it, opened it and it was a, a job offer. So I decided to see what, what it was about. <laughs> and then I, I had to immediately you know, excuse myself and, you know, go out in the hall and just start reading it because that first page just captivated me so much. Um, and uh, I, I think we'll go through it later, but that uh, I, I hope that someone does make it into a movie because that opening scene just might be my favorite scene in the whole book. And I have many, uh, but that, that opening scene just you know, drew me into the story and I immediately answered and wanted to know more. Uh, and, you know, that was the start of, of, um, of the project for me. And then somehow it just kept on getting better and better. Um, you know, we got into contact, uh, the two of us, and uh, I thought you were, you were still brilliant to work with. Uh, very open-minded and you, you know, you, you provide me with a, a great script and then, and then you really, you know, trusted me with the, uh, the illustrations, uh, and some of the, you know, the things I wanted to, to depict. Uh, so it was a, it was a brilliant, um, it was a really brilliant, um, a great opportunity. It was a wonderful collaboration. <laughs> yeah. It's a one, yeah. And yeah. I mean, we should, if this is not like the, um, the DVD extras where everyone is required to say that uh, it was great to work with each other. That kind of collaboration is very, very tricky because people can feel mm. very proprietary about their things. And, you know, I say this particularly to kids out there who are working maybe with a friend or something on a graphic novel together. Some of you doing the words and some of you doing the, the pictures, you know, it's like, I, it was really, really fun with Joe to do this game of, like when someone says something to you, you open yourself up to it and you're like, wait, think about it in terms of the project, not in terms of what I originally envisioned, but what it will look like in the end. So Joe had all sorts of suggestions for little ways the plot could be adjusted and improved. And um, it was super because it almost, it made the, it made the project better. Let's, let's just give one example. Um, so there was, there's one passage, so there are two sisters. Um, and the two sisters, one of them is following a route to become kind of a sorceress. And the other sister, the other daughter of East, is uh, starting to connect with the woodland and the sort of the wild places of the shore. And so the one is going to become powerful within the city and with all of these sort of like these masked balls and that kind of thing. And in fact, is going to start murdering uh, her, uh, her lovers as a way to kind of feed this city. And the other is going to be off in the woodland. Now, in the original, I was like, well, I need to take these girls from the, about age eight or something and show how they grow up. Um, and so the best way to do that is to not have any words at all, I thought. So, and just to have the illustrator suggest, you know, like ways that we can show their personalities diverging from each other and the way that they become such very, very different people. Now, but it was, um, you know, I mean, I suggested some scenes, yeah, but it was so much Joe's work as an illustrator to try to choose individual scenes that would capture their essence as we see them growing up. It was different working on, on this project than other graphic novel projects where I've been the illustrator, uh, because usually I get a script and it's very broken down. I have, you know, a set number of pages, uh, maybe, you know, 115. And then they say on page one, you know, there's six panels and this happens in panel one, this happens in panel two. Uh, and then I have, I might have some 
leeway of like you know splitting a panel in two or merging two panels in one but uh, it's pretty uh laid out for me and in this one i really had just the dialogue and i had what happens in the story and the breakdown of the pages you know was all up to me and uh on the one hand you know that's that required more work but it was so much more freedom and more fun uh and i got to really play with the pacing you know decide like you know how much uh how much space on a page a scene should take and yeah in that way it's it really was more of a collaboration than i usually have on a graphic novel project it's a tough story to adapt in the sense because it moves um from the from you know sort of incredible beauty this beauteous city and the the um the moors of um of Brittany which you know in the swell of the sea and that kind of thing but also it's a story of at times tremendous violence not just as the city sinks beneath the waves but because you also you learn that in a sense this family has to sacrifice people in order to keep this all this magic alive and so you know there's a great detail that came up in one of the original sources that this this um woman sort of invites people to her tower and then gives them a mask to wear um when they're leaving and you know the mask fixes itself to their face and wraps around and pulls their head off <laughs> at which point they um you know they're dead and she she throws their body in the bay where um where it then joins the ghosts of the previous headless uh head, headless paramours now the interesting thing is that for an illustrator, that was one of the things when I was talking to um, the editor at first second and saying, who should we find as an illustrator? We talked about, we said, there needs to be a person who has this range between the sort of the beauty on the one hand, but also this almost uh, absurd story, kind of like fairy tale type violence at other times. And I thought that that was one thing that really was wonderful about what you did was you were able to capture both of those things very credibly. Thank you. Uh, spookiness and um, things that are you know, kind of on the darker side, it has, they've always been something that, that uh, captivate me. Um, but then my drawings tend to always turn out very cute. So the two, the two kind <laughs> of end up merging together um, and at, I have to say, uh, some years ago, it used to drive me crazy because I wanted to do like really dark stuff, and and then I would show people, and you know, I would show people like, look at my ghost, and they're like, oh, he's adorable, and it's like, no, he's spooky, he's, he's scary, uh, but now I've completely embraced it, and you know, the the spooky scary is just my combination now, and uh, I'm rolling with it, and I think it it did but that's, come out that's perfect for this. Yeah, and in um, in Daughters of East, I think it it came out really nicely. It's exactly the type of story that is for me. So I, I mean, I do feel like even though this story is ancient, I mean, it's a story that is older than Christianity, probably. Um, at the same time, it has a kind of a weird relevance now, um, and partially coming from like that stuff we were just talking about with the combination of the grotesque and the beautiful. Not just that the world is a place that is at once both uh, grotesque and beautiful, but also because it's about a civilization that in a sense doesn't want to confront the costs of living the way that they do. And eventually those costs catch up to you. And then this, this the city falls beneath the waves. The, the whole thing comes crashing down. And I think we're at one of those moments when our civilization is confronting its own costs, and we need to be prepared to recognize what we have to pay um, so that we all can remain above the waves. <laughs> hmm. so, um, so thank you all for joining us. Um, I just wanna finally say, because the uh, theme of the festival is American ingenuity, that um, 
we can find a way forward and we must find a way forward. And I'm so glad that you as young readers are going to be taking up that banner and marching alongside of us into the future. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh, yes, thank you all for joining us. And um, for me, the message of the book was uh, to have the courage to stand up for your responsibilities, um, not just as you know, member of whatever country you're for, but as a human being. And uh, I hope that you'll enjoy the book when you pick it up. Uh, thank you so much, Tobin, um, for this talk. It was great to hear you talk in person uh, after so many email exchanges. Uh, it was great to see you. Yeah, great to meet you and uh, see you later. See you later. <laughs>